Hello, my name is Nurse Pauline RN. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about S bar. S stands for situation, B stands for background, A stands for assessment, R stands for recommendation. S bar is a communication tool that we use between nurses and doctors in the hospital. Nurses use S-bar in their nurses' notes, during their handoffs, and in general communication, nurses to doctors, and when we're gonna make a telephone call to the doctor, we will communicate in the form of S-bar. If you're a nursing student, you have to have a registered nurse with you in order to be communicating with the doctors on the telephone. Before you call a physician, make sure you review the chart appropriately. Make sure you know the admitting diagnosis of your patient, the attending physician of your patients. Read the notes of the most recent notes of the page of the nurse who you took this patient from the notes from the nurse who gave you report or handoff make sure you know the allergies of your patients make sure you know the medications of your patients the iv fluids your patients are on your antibiotics your patients are on your lab results abnormal lab results situation stands for s stands for situation b stands for background a is for assessment and r is for recommendation First, we, we're going to be talking to the doctor on the phone about the situation of your patient. I'm not, begin, I'm not going to be giving you a specific patient today. You'll tell the doctor your name, who is calling. You'll tell the doctor the name of the hospital you're calling from. You'll tell the doctor which floor you're calling from what is the room number of your patient. That is the situation where you are calling from, the name of the patient, the room number, and the floor you're calling from. Then we'll move on to background. You're going to be giving the doctor a background of your patient. Make sure you're calling the right physician because if you don't call the right physician, the doctor will not be happy that you're wasting his time to call him and he's not the attending physician. So before you call the doctor on the phone, make sure you have the phone number of the mm -hmm. correct doctor. Okay, so this is the background. You're going to tell the doctor the complete name and room number of the patient. You're going to give the doctor a little background of the patient, the date the patient was admitted, the admitting physician, the reason why the patient was admitted, the admitting diagnosis of your patient. Then you're going to state the problem. Why are you calling the doctor? You tell the doctor, doctor, my vital signs are unstable. Temperature is elevated. Heart rate is low. Heart rate is tacky. Respiration is 12. As respiration is low. Blood pressure is low or blood pressure is very high. Maybe the oxygen is less than 90% on room air. State the problem. Maybe the lab values are abnormal. Maybe the potassium is low. Maybe the H and H is low. State the problem. Maybe the magnesium is low. State the problem. Maybe the patient is on pe is having pain, not being relieved by the medications the doctor's orders. 
maybe this patient is a dementia patient who overnight when you came on the shift you know that she was confused and she was trying to get out of bed maybe the doctor asked you to do an EKG on your patient and the EKG was not normal so you're calling the doctor you have to give the doctor state the background why are you calling me state the problem maybe you have a fresh post up patient the foley catheter was discontinued at 6 a.m this morning and now it's 3 p.m the doctor told you if the patient was not voiding adequately by 3 p.m give him a call see so this problem is she has not been voiding adequately she has not been voiding greater than 30 cc an hour. So that is the reason why I'm calling you. Maybe you're calling because the problem is the patient is nauseated and maybe she's throwing up, but there's no nausea medication ordered for this patient. State the problem. So we did our situation. We gave the doctor a little background of the patient. Now we're gonna go on to assessment. We're gonna tell the doctor, what am I seeing here? What's going on with the patient? What is my assessment of this patient? My patient is either full code or DNI. What is the code status of this patient? Your assessment of this patient, oxygen is less than 90% on room air. Your assessment of this patient, pain is on relief. The pain meds I gave her, her pain still remains on a scale of 10. What your assessment is, my patient is having, she is lethargic and she is conversing with me, but she seems a little bit lethargic this morning in comparison to when I had her yesterday. Your assessment of your patient could be, maybe the abdomen is distended. You let the doctor come and take a look at her because the patient told you that for four days she has not had a bowel movement. What is the problem? What is your assessment? My assessment is that this patient is a fresh post-op patient. The doctor is the first person who changes the dressing of the post-op patient and doctor no. I need someone to come and change the dressing because this dressing is saturated. I reinforced it. I did not change it, but she's really bleeding a lot and I would like you to come and see this patient. Maybe the problem is that the extremities, it could be a post-op patient, her lower extremities is warm to touch. Maybe her lower extremities have pain maybe maybe she's having signs and symptoms of thrombophobitis redness what is your assessment maybe this patient yesterday when i had her she wasn't joined this doctor but today looking at her she seems a little bit yellow today doctor my patient is having cyanosis my patient is having blueness what is your assessment of your patients doctor Yesterday when I had this patient, the doctor did not have, the patient did not have any edema. Now looking at this patient today, doctor, by lower extremities in the ankle, she's having three plus edema. What is your assessment? And you always tell everything you see to the doctor. What is your assessment? Sometimes when you're fresh, when you are new nurse, you don't want to throw things out there to say, I think the underlying problem is this, or I think that the patient is that. But if you have to say it, maybe when you're more experienced, you feel like throwing that out there. So we are still in assessment mode. You can tell the doctor what you think about all the assessment you just told him. You can say, well, doctor, my patient's respiration is less than 90 i'd like 
to keep her on two liters of nasal cannula, or maybe she, it has to be increased to three liters of nasal cannula. Maybe the doctor will say, okay, go ahead, get her up, moving, don't have her lying in bed, or if the person isn't oxygenating adequately, the doctor will say, well, maybe we can draw ABG on her. Um, this is assessment. What do you think? My patient is itching, doctor. I think she's having an allergic reaction. I just gave her blood transfusion. She's itching. I think she's having an allergic reaction to the blood transfusion. You can say, doctor, my patient is wheezing and it has just started within the hour, but there is no NEP treatments ordered for this patient. That's what I think. You can say, what, what is the underlying problem? The patient is voiding less than 30, the patient is voiding less than 30 cc an hour. Maybe this person needs a bladder scan. Maybe this patient needs an in and out catheter, especially for post-op patient. This is serious. If your patient isn't voiding adequately, greater than 30 cc's an hour, your patients have, may have to go back to the OR. So keep your eyes on top. It's not the responsibility of the LPNs or the patient care technician. You have to watch your output for your post-op patient's urine. Um, for assessment, tell the doctor what you think. Doctor, the patient is nauseated. There's no nausea medication here for her. I think after she ate, her stomach got upset and she really needs some nausea medication. Your patient is, what? tell the doctor, what do you think? My H&H &H is low. I think my patient needs a blood transfusion, but she's Jehovah Witness. She's not going to take the blood doctor. So could you order some iron IV for this patient? Remember, when patients are going to be having blood transfusions, the doctor has to come up and sign the consent. It's not the nurse's responsibility to sign, to, to communicate to the doctor about the blood transfusion. It's the doctor's responsibility. So now we're finished with our assessment. We told the doctor in the first place what the assessments were. Then we told the doctor, after you tell the doctor what your assessment is, maybe it's just one assessment. It doesn't have to be all this list. Just choose which from my list that looks like your patient. Then when you say, doctor, my patient has been itching. I just gave her a unit of blood. I think you have to tell the doctor what you think the underlying problem is. I think she's having a reaction to the blood transfusion. Itching is mild reaction. Can you order some Benadryl? There's no Benadryl PR in here. Can you order it for me? So we are finished with a situation. We are finished with background. We are finished with assessment. Now, R is for recommendation. Recommendation is what you recommend to the doctor. You say, if you think your doctor looks as if, appears as if she's going to be, you'll have to call the meds team in about 20 minutes. Say to the doctor, recommendation, recommendation. Doctor, I'm expecting you to come right away to come and see this patient because if you're not here right away, I, w I will have to call the meds team. You're going to go into the room and if the doctor gave you any orders, you will, whatever the order is, if you need a doctor to come and see the patient, start working on your orders. Make sure if the doctor orders IVs or antibiotics or blood, doctor of the lower extremities, whatever the doc order the doctor gave you on the phone, do not administer them until when the orders are written, until when the orders are in the computer. 
a nurse in court is legally responsible for all our interventions to our patients. The doctors are the only ones who are ordering. You say, doctor, I need you to come right away to come and see my patient. This is recommendation. Another recommendation, you say, doctor, my patient's glucose, I've done everything. I've changed from low-dose insulin to high-dose insulin. Do you think we could transfer this patient to a monitored floor or ICU where she can get insulin IV drips? We do not do insulin drips on this floor. Maybe your patient has, a, maybe your patient has uncontrolled hypertension. The doctor has ordered one blood pressure meds, another one, another order, changing, keep on ordering, and the blood pressure is still elevated. Recommendation, doctor, do you think we can mm -hmm. transfer this patient to a monitored floor ICU where your patients can get blood pressure IV drips? We do not do IV blood pressure meds on the medical or med surge floors. We only give oral medications. Recommendations, your patients, that EKG was not good. I need you to come and take a look at it, doctor. I think this patient needs to be transferred to a monitored floor. This patient has a history of AFib and the blood, the EKG said the patient was in bradycardia. The patient is asymptomatic, no symptoms. But for safety, the night shift, um, but for safety, please come and take a look at this patient, please, doctor, because maybe he may need to be transferred to a monitored floor. We do not have any monitored for heart monitors on our floor. Recommendation for patient wheezing, Doctor, you're going to order the NEP treatment for me, please? Thank you. Recommendation for patients. Bladder scan. Doctor, I did the bladder scan. The urine was greater than 200. Doctor, can I, can, uh, can you order the in and out catheter for my fresh post-op patient? I need to empty this patient's bladder, doctor. These are all your recommendations to the doctor. 